Uh, hello, thanks for joining our webinar today. Uh, I'm Jeff Garland with FBIRD CRM. I'm doing the presentation today. We're doing a presentation on Zoho Marketing Hub's web assistance. Uh, for those of you familiar with Zoho campaigns, you'll know that it's notorious with um, it simply blasting out emails, perhaps a few autoresponders. And there is a big difference between Zoho Campaigns and Zoho Marketing Hubs. And when we review the Zoho Marketing Hub web assistance today, um, I hope you will reach the same conclusion. So let's go ahead and get started here. So about FBERG CRM, so we help micro business owners realize their Zoho One investment. We work with the entire Zoho technology stack. We are Zoho MarTech, which is basically marketing plus technology, and we work with all of the Zoho uh, marketing technologies, PageSense, Marketing Hub, Sales IQ forms, campaigns, and webinars. And we've helped hundreds of micro businesses over the years with their Zoho implementations. A little bit about me I am the founder of FBERG CRM. I've got 25 years' experience in systems engineering and a bunch of experience with CRM and email marketing and marketing automation platforms and in my spare time I do volunteer on a pro bono basis with uh, implementing Zoho for nonprofits or making you know adjustments to their existing Zoho implementation so if you are aware of any uh, nonprofits that do some great work and they're could potentially be interested in uh, some of my pro bono services uh, send them my way and uh, that would be great so let's go ahead and get started here. Okay, so the main thing that, or one of the main things that Marketing Hub is great at is behavioral marketing. You know, no longer do we send out email blasts and then see who read and opened and then say, you know, well, let me send to the reads, let me send this to the people that did not open. We're actually going to be engaging with our audience based on actions they take on our website and actions they take with our pop-ups and actions that they take with our blogs and uh, all of our pages um, and so this is where behavioral marketing comes in so you know as I mentioned say goodbye to mass emails sent manually to a recipient list we are basically be sending emails to people and then whatever they click on will be sending them more information so create and track sales signals so this is basically a string of, of clicks that insinuate um, that someone's interested in your product. For me, I sell Zoho uh, implementation services. So for example, if somebody clicked on my about page, my pricing page, and my implementation page, to me that's a sales signal of they're looking for someone to do a Zoho implementation for them. And so once we know that information, we can then send them an email, we can target them uh, in other ways, which we'll um, go into greater detail here in a moment. Engage with audience based on their web behaviors. Um, so yeah, this is, you know, we send them an email based on what they click on. We then uh, do some follow-up behaviors. Uh, contextual marketing through what we know about the customers. So this is related to smart pop-ups. So for instance, if we know that a visitor is in the insurance industry and they are a VP or a director we could show them a specific pop-up or if they have a dot org in their email address we know that they're a nonprofit so we can show them a smart pop-up um, by their email address knowing that they you know they have a nonprofit email address and we'll get into that in greater detail. Follow up customers based on website behaviors and confirm interest action, right? So, you know, if people come to your website, they're not clicking on things that they're not interested in. They're clicking on things, they're doing behaviors, they're performing these sales signals um, based on gaining information. So these, when, when someone comes to your website, they're clicking on these three things, these five things, they're signing up for this, you know, those are confirmed, I like to call them confirmed interest actions, which basically is them telling you, hey, this is exactly what I'm interested in. And so you can take some actions based on that. Um, use web behaviors that place customers into highly personalized email journeys. So we can basically, you know, send out an email and then based on what they click, what they do, 
uh, we can then dump them into a email journey. And those of you familiar with the um, Zoho Journey Builder uh, can be a little overwhelming when you first um, uh, open it up. But those of you who have kind of made sense of how it all works, you'll know that um, if, if, you, if, if people do things on your website and then you could put them into Journey Builder um, to put them on a journey, for lack of a better term, um, you, know, you can do some, some great and awesome things. Um, so let leads qualify themselves. So this is again something um, something that you know, instead of, there's a marketing hub does support lead qualification. And so basically, you know, base, basically uh, we'll be sending them emails and based on the actions that they take, they're gonna be qualifying themselves. So it could be, you know, once they click on these three things, they move to a different lead stage but ultimately we want to get them from um, marketing ready to sales ready, get them ready for our sales team. And send data to Zoho CRM, perhaps when the lead is sales ready. So this is based, again, based on what people do on our website. We can send data to CRM. Perhaps we want to set a task for our CRM owners to follow up with these people. Uh, perhaps we want to update a field in CRM. Perhaps we want to send an internal notification, you know, one-off email to someone on our sales team when somebody does something on our website. You know, what better time to contact people uh, than right when they're on their website? And so we're going to go review some of this, but those are some of the advantages of doing behavioral marketing. So here are some of the tools in our Zoho Marketing Hub Web Assistants. You see here on the right, if I click on Web Assistant, Websites, and then I click on my website, this is my test environment here. You'll see that I have these tabs at the top, and these are what we're going to be reviewing today. Dashboards, Pages, Events, Goals, Missed Goals, purchase abandonment, smart pop-ups, and we'll be hit a little bit on setup here in a moment. Um, but this is where the magic happens. And so before I get too far into Marketing Hub, I did want to try to clear something up that a lot of people are not aware of is, you know, if John Doe comes to your website and does three things, you're not gonna know John Doe did that. Why? Because you have not set a cookie on his mobile device or his computer. So the first thing we have to do is set a cookie on their PC. Um, you'll note that um, Zoho actually has uh, two or three different products and unfortunately they do not use the same cookie. And so you do have to set the cookie for the application that you're gonna be using. What do I mean by cookie? Uh, so we're going to send someone an email, and when they click on that link or any link, it's going to set a cookie on the machine so that all of the pages and clicks that they do moving forward will be recorded. You know, we'll know about those lists. But if we send John Doe an email and he clicks on that, and then say he he travels, you know two states over and goes to a hotel room and uses their computer and comes to our website, we're not going to know that John Doe is doing anything, you know, because we don't have that cookie on his particular machine. So, um, you know, you do have to set this cookie for this to uh, work properly. Um, so Zoho Marketing Hub, you set the cookie by sending an email with uh, web links. And when those are when those are clicked, the cookie is set. For those of you um, who use Sales IQ cookies, um, this is basically um, you'll see this little bit of code that I have right here. Um, this is basically some code that you append to the end of a URL, and when clicked, if this were to be clicked, Jeffrey Garland with an email Jeff Garland at FBergCRM.com a cookie will be planted on that in sales IQ and so now we know how to set cookies in Zoho Marketing Hub 
know how to set cookies and sales IQ, or at least you're, I wanted to make you aware of how these two do not use the same cookie. So there is some, um, some, uh, there's a good integration there. But if we come here on um, Zoho campaigns, if we were to put in So this is the URL to my blog. And so we're coming in here to Camp Zoho Sales IQ. And I actually have the new 2.0 version, which is very exciting. Um, so if I do generate, you'll see how it uses my existing URL here. And then it appends this information back here. So if we choose copy link and we open up a notepad, paste that in there you can see that this is the part that it adds so whenever you send this whenever you send an email through CRM or marketing hub it's going to substitute using a merge field first name last name and then the email address so that if I were to send this to you via email and you clicked on the actual link um, click on the actual link then I would know say you were Jane Doe it would say it would say Jane here, Doe here, and then Jane Doe's email address. And so I point this out because what if you do want to use Sales IQ and you do want to use Zoho Marketing Hub, and Marketing Hub but now you know that these two cookies do not talk to each other. Um, what you'll have to do is create your regular Zoho Marketing link and then append this part to it. So in Zoho Marketing Hub if you were sending a link with this to this rather uh, that would be great um, but if you want to set the cookie in sales IQ uh, when you send your email through Zoho Marketing Hub you need to append this part to the end of every email uh, that goes out through Marketing Hub and this way you'll set the cookie on sales IQ and you'll set the cookie um, on Marketing Hub and so that was a little off topic, but I think that it's important if you're using the entire Zoho One Suite. Um, so let's jump right in here to set up. Uh, so the first thing that we have to do is we have to insert this code onto your website. Uh, as always, forward it to your developer. They can insert it into the head. Just whatever web platform you're using, if you Google say you're using Wix if you just Google Wix insert header code uh, you'll get you know plenty of, of tips and tricks on how to insert this information in there so you can just do copy to clipboard and then you control V it into your header code um, and this has to be there for um, Zoho marketing hub to track your users um, and so if you look right above this, this is a cookie policy banner. Um, this basically is telling people, hey, we are tracking your, um, you know, what you're clicking on and what you're doing. And we're just letting you know this. Now, if you have a clients in uh, California and or um, some of the European countries, uh, you do have to have this enabled to be compliant. Um, but you can see that we can remove banner, remove. And now there is no banner on my website. But if we apply the banner, then you will see that there. If you look in the top right here, this is where we can actually edit the message. This is what it's going to show users. Where do you want to put it? The bottom or the top? You can customize this, design, and save and activate. And so this that's how you basically control this cookie policy banner. And you don't have to use it if you have a WordPress and you're using your own pop-up or whatever. Um, that should suffice as well. So scrolling down here on this setup page, alias domain. So this is if you have a kind of a subdomain, like some people have their blogs, they have their root domain, which in my instance, fbergcrm.com, but they could have their blog on blog.fbergcrm or blog whatever domain. Uh, there's a thousand scenarios that we could come up with here, but the idea here is if you have a subdomain or some kind of alias domain, you do want to group those all into uh, this kind of one main main domain. That's what you, that's what you would use this alias domain configuration for. 
And another thing that I find very useful is tracking filters. Um, these are available in Google Analytics. So hopefully you have them set up. But the idea here is if you have a office uh, with 20 people in it, you would find out what your IP address, your public IP address is that all of the members of your office go out on. Um, and so you could add that IP address here under traffic filters. And whenever they come to your website, it will not skew your metrics, especially here on the dashboard, which we'll review in a, in a, in a moment. Um, but now with COVID, uh, and almost everybody's working at home. And so unfortunately you cannot add, if you have an, if you have 20 people, you cannot ask them what is their IP address. Um, and then insert that in here because you are, you are limited to only having six filters. But what I would suggest you do is if you come here and do what is myip.com, then this shows you what your IP address is. And so if you're in the office uh, and you're sharing your that internet connection, everyone in the office is gonna be using this one more than likely. But if you're at home or if you're on your cell phone, this is always gonna change. So that's a little bit about traffic filters here. Uh, and I did want to note that uh, for those of you using WordPress, uh, there's a great little plugin called Header and Footer Code Manager that um, you can insert the code into this little plugin. And I use it for all of my Zoho marketing um, or my Zoho scripts, you know, a little bit of page sense, a little bit of sales IQ, um, some other tracking codes. But this is, um, you know, a great plugin um, that if you're using WordPress, makes it very easy to. Um, insert uh, the code onto your page and so let's talk a little bit about the Zoho web assistance dashboard so you'll see if we come here we click on dashboard and again if you look here this is kind of your breadcrumb you can see we're under web assistance we're under websites and then we're under this website so this is the dashboard um, you'll see here this is the last 24 hours you can um, show different date ranges. Um, if you are using um, Google Analytics, you'll get a lot more information than what you see here. So this is kind of just a snapshot. Um, you know, if you're deep into the, uh, the rabbit hole of Google, of analytics, you know, Google is definitely one of the, the better analytics packages. Uh, so source of visits, we can come here and change this. You can see these are our sources. Again, this is in my test environment time-based report. So you can see you know, at two o'clock, six people visited this page. And again, this is just showing you kind of a, a snapshot of your 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 web goals. So you have top performing pages, uh, trending sources, goals, events, which we'll cover in a, in a little bit. But right now, I do not have any that are active. Uh, so we will not see any available data there. Smart pop-up metrics, top performing goals, top missed goals, top performing countries, browsers, devices, location. And while you might think that browsers and devices are not, you might skip right past those, but it is important to note these because um, when you're making pop-ups or when you're making forms, you wanna know um, what um, device people are using the most to access your website so you can make it form you know more friendly for them so you don't want to have a four page form if people are coming on a mobile device mainly uh, you want to make that you know just a you know maybe a one page form just anything but a four page form um, it's down here in location as well and so unfortunately this isn't very customizable it's kind of what you see is what you get um, but this is the dashboard here so let's jump over here to zoho web assistant pages which is this little tab here and so here after you insert the code onto your website um, as your pages are accessed they will start showing up here so if you have a particular blog post and you're wondering why you do not see it here after you know two or three weeks it's because nobody's actually read that blog post and so it isn't loaded into the system um, 
but as the pages are accessed, they will be loaded here. And you can always choose validate and insert, you know, that particular blog post or any URL that's not that's not currently in your uh, showing up here in the um, in the default pages that are shown, which are the ones that are then accessed. And so uh, this is uh, has a great you know uses. Um, one of the things is you can actually group these pages, and so. Here I have one called Zoho Desk Visitors, right? And so you can see here Zoho Desk Implementation, and then also my blogs that contain Zoho Desk. And so we will get into um, what we can do when these pages are grouped here in a moment, but I did want to point out if we come here under Journeys, uh, sorry, uh, Legion. products now you can see here this is my test scenario I have Zoho desk implementation well if you click up here lead generation you can see web assistant groups and if we click on that basically we are adding people that came in my in the instance I just showed you Zoho desk we showed you those three pages if someone comes to those three desks those three desk pages they are going to get put they're going to get associated with this product in the awareness stage so those of you familiar with the buyer's journey there's awareness consideration and decision stage and we're going to put them in the awareness stage but you know again looking up here in the top in our breadcom products the Zoho desk implementation product this is um, how we say if you access these page groups associate them with this product uh, which can be beneficial so uh, again let me come back here to web assistants websites here and then pages and so this is if you look at the Zoho marketing Hub webinar this is the page that I created um, that's basically the uh, registration page for everyone to sign up for this webinar that you're viewing right now and so what I want to know is I want to know some of the tracking metrics right and so if we were to click on this you can see I have my overall report in the last 24 hours and so total visits and again the only people that would show in um, under known visits and total um, some of these metrics would be the people that we already have a cookie for um, so pages so lead based report this is where we would see all the people that actually clicked on this particular page that are in our, our system. Smart pop-ups, which we will get into uh, a little bit later, but basically uh, we can create smart pop-ups that are page specific. So I could say something like, I could create a smart pop-up that says, if someone comes to this page and they scroll all the way to the very bottom, then hit them with a pop-up that says, you know, it's, it's not too late to sign up right now. Or something of that nature um, and tracking URLs again we're doing this page specific so tracking URLs you can see here are some of the ones that I created so if you come here and to create create tracking URL uh, those of you in, uh, that use Google Analytics and some of their campaign tracking metrics and some of the UTM um, uh, parameters this should look very familiar to you but when you create a new tracking you're gonna put in the website page you're gonna put in a channel there's plenty of default channels here we can even do yeah, social and then we can select a particular social network and under your campaign name campaign turn term campaign content so I'm going to cancel out of this but if you look at this what is it what does it look like what do you see well you'll see that I have what six six different campaign sources six different tracking URLs to know who has I've created six different tracking URLs and you can see smart pop-up so this is one that I've put on my website that says hey we're having a webinar on Friday and you can see that I had eight visitors say oh yeah let me click that little learn more button and then right above that is social blast which I included um, 
all of my social networks on as a source my email signature I did put this uh, email I did put this webinar kind of an advertisement block you know we're having a webinar on April 23rd click here to learn more and so I advertise it there I even put a post in the uh, community learning series on Zoho Marketing Hub's discussion forum and so I created a source there and so what this shows me is that I have you know, these six different sources um, and so I'll know who came here so if I do um, say uh, I think some of these skew these metrics are off here Or actually let me go back to this so discussion form so when I click the link it shows you the shortened URL so that you can you know you just don't have that long URL but this is the actual URL and if you break this down you'll see you UTM source equals Zoho marketing hub discussion forum and so one of the things that I'll show you in a bit is how we can create goals um, miss goals and events and you can also tie you, know, you can go in further and add this in here so you know we're about to go over the smart pop-ups and you could say if somebody goes to this page from this UTM source show them this pop-up but if they come to this page from an email signature which we'll know because the UTM source will be email signature then show them a different pop-up so you can see how creating these track get track URLs these can be beneficial um, to create so that you can leverage them down the road. And if we come back here to pages, and you'll see here, it's kind of just says marked as important and tracking you your tracking URL created so you can see these three here have tracking URLs that I've created um, and then the ones down here do not have um, tracking URLs created yet and so this is Zoho pages and again so if we wanted to remember how I told you that we can create pages or we use these pages and we can put these pages into groups and then assign whoever access any of these pages within this group um, add them to a product in, in, in marketing hub and so if we are here and we click create new group I'm just gonna say uh, let's see we'll call it so marketing hub demo or actually let's just call it Oh, marketing you know, group pages based on criteria and so here we go we're gonna do contains marketing hub right let's take out this little dash and so any page that contains marketing hub on it is going to be in this group so that means that if we send an email to someone they set the cookie on their machine and they come to a page that has marketing hub in the URL they are going to get added to this group called Zoho marketing hub and they're going to get added to our products I have a product called Zoho marketing hub and they will get added there and so you can see here we can have multiple criteria right so we can say pages contain this and pages contain let's get rid of these two so um, so what's this gonna do this is gonna say filter criteria page contains marketing hub and page contains Zoho marketing hub so now what we've set up is only the people that have read marketing hub blog posts and so you can see you can add more here and you can say or you can do and or or and you know the sky's the limit of what you can do but the idea here is we are creating a page group 
so that we can associate this group with a particular product and, and tr get into some automations here. So this is just one example of how we can use pages. So next up here is uh, Zoho Web Assistant Events. So we'll come over here, we'll click on this events tab right here. And this is where we create events. And events are basically clicks on buttons, clicks on web links, clicks on CTAs, which sometimes are buttons. It's anything that a user can go to your website and click on. It could be, you know, a menu item. You know, if you look at my website, I have home page, um, implementation pages, about pages, all of those. So if I wanted to create an event with any of those pages that were opened from the menu, you know, I could do that. You know, I also have a Zoho um, consultation page. You know, if you're interested in my services, you want to set up a consultation. If you scroll down, you press a button called Set Up Zoho Consultation, Set Up Free Zoho Consultation. Um, then I will know that you click that button. And so let's just jump right in here. Um, this is going to be our... test URL so I created a page on my website so first off we have I just did a find events and we have two methods we can either use a GUI to just simply find it and I'll show you that in a moment or we can use JavaScript to elements so if you do have a web developer um, maybe you do this it's it can be faster using these uh, in bulk instead of going to every single page and uh, manually highlighting everything uh, but if you don't have a um, um, a developer you might want to skip this one because it is a little bit more technical but as I mentioned we're going to create we're going to jump in here and just select the elements and so I'm going to say call this one a Berg CRM demo click event and we are going to put in Uh, this particular URL load my page and you can see it's loading up this page here and so you can see wherever I drag my mouse it's basically highlighting a component on the web page so if I scroll down you know we have these these sometimes are FAQs right and so basically we're saying if someone clicks here then make it so that we know that they triggered this event right so we want to know hey if somebody clicks here on button one then they're going to get associated with fberg demo demo event click if they click here if they click here and again you can only do one one little um event uh for every um the, for every creation process and so if you wanted to have events, if you wanted to say Fberg CRM demo event click button one, then you would highlight this and say if they click this, you can see, hey, it's showing you what's in the foreground here. So this is this is saying if someone comes here and clicks this button, save. Right? And so this is the one that we just created. Fberg CRM, Fberg CRM demo event click. And we could do the same thing for button two. Okay, come in here, control C, define event. We're gonna use the GUI. We're gonna say And these could be call to actions, these could be, you know, a range of things, which we'll get into in a moment. so if we wanted to select button two we would then come down here click button two and just make sure that your names are associated with whatever button that you're setting up for and you can see if we scroll down we have other options we have this these tabs here so if we know somebody if somebody clicks the tab two or somebody clicks this icon or this heading um, or any information down here these are my social networking links um, these are our 
certification so if we say we want to find if somebody comes down here and clicks on any of these um, you know who was it that clicked that but the idea is again we use this event so that we can create goals and miss goals from these events so you can see in this one we have this little icon which is um, basically a CRM icon and if we select that we can change this click CRM icon right save oh, it looks like I already have another event for this so let's choose um, let's choose this one and we're gonna call this one workflow icon save All right, so let's do this one Looks like I created one for all of these already. All right, so let's just scroll down here and say, if someone comes here and clicks on this particular tab here, we'll change our save. Okay, and so basically what we're doing is we're going to our website, we're choosing something that people will click on um, and we're getting and we're saving that basically to the record so when we create these um, these events we know who are actually clicking on them and I'll show you uh, in a moment uh, some examples some better examples of those um, so for here in events and we click on an actual event again you have these metrics here right so you can see in the last 24 hours, nobody has clicked that particular icon on my webinar demo page. But if this was your home page and you had things like um, request a quote or book a demo, then when you could you could see that people are clicking those buttons. And there's again, we'll use these events in some of the goals that we'll create in the future and lead based reports and so again these are people that are you have sent an email to to set that cookie on their machine and if they click on this link you will know it and they will be listed here under um, leads based reports and so let's move over to goals So these are some of the events demos. So click donate now if you're a nonprofit. Click request a quote. Book a demo. Again, we went over these, uh, but I did want to show you that slide. And so let's move forward here. Web assistant goals. And we'll come over here. We'll click on goals. Now let's choose create goal. Now, this is a goal is where you set up goal-based behavior on visitor activities, identify the rate of conversion. And so goals could be, if you remember my one of my beginning slides that was behavioral marketing, um, it said, you know, if you click on the about page, the pricing page, and our implementation page, then I'm going to send you an email about our implementation services. And so that would be an example of a goal um, but let's go through this page here um, before we come up with specific examples so you're going to give your goal a name you are going to you can see define goal conditions so what are the conditions that need to be met before this goal is actually you know achieved and it's either achieved or not achieved and so type of visitor both new visitors and returning visitors so Remember how I told you that if John Doe was using his home computer, he clicked on an email from us, we would know where John Doe clicked. Um, 
if John Doe goes to, remember how I told you if he went to a hotel two states over and started using their computer, the first time that he went to their to the, to the, our website, um, he would be a new user, even though he's an actual user from his home computer. But the second time, like day two of the conference, he goes, he, he accesses our site, he would be a returning visitor. And so type of visitor, and again, we're defining our goal conditions. What is our audience? What are, the, what are our conditions? So we're going to say both new visitors and returning visitors. Channel, any channel, define source. And so remember how I told you that when we are in Zoho pages, we can associate uh, UTM metrics, or not UTM you know, yeah, populate their metrics. Um, so here, this is where we utilize those. So in our webinar, um, the link that we, in the example that I used previously, we created several links. Uh, one of them, if you remember, was um, our smart pop-up, right? And so this is basically saying, you know, new user or returning user, we don't care still meet this criteria again we're defining the goal conditions channel and you came from the smart pop-up meaning you came to my website I hit you with the smart pop-up and you click to learn more um, and this this is a goal right and so we could have different goals I'm about to show you how, what we can do with these goals once achieved here in a moment but um, if you so we'll click we'll get rid of the define channel do any channel I'll do source if you do decide define source now this is where you can put in you know again some sources so it, maybe it's not the channel but it's the actual source and this is a slew of things in here that we could use source of visit channel so let's scroll down some include activities of leads before their conversion so if somebody comes to our website and we don't know who they are and they come two times say they come two separate days and one day they do a bunch of actions two the next day they do a bunch of actions but the third day they actually maybe sign up for our newsletter or uh, we send them an email and they set that cookie all that past actions will be rolled up in here uh, so that's kind of what include activities is and this is where we specify the goals so this is our target now we say goal criteria and so visits a particular page performs a particular event visits any page with a specific keyword and its URL and so if you remember correctly uh, what we did previously was the perform was we creating an event so performs a particular event we click that now all of our events should come down here and so these are the two that we click that we set up just now and so this was remember the button one and then this was the tab that we created so if we say if you come to our website and you click on that tab uh, we can say you can have events on a bunch of different pages or just one so we'll just say if you come to our home page and you click that then you will have, you will meet this goal right or if we come here and say visit a particular page we'll say if you come to our home page click this plus sign and say and you visit a particular page which is our about page and a third one you visit our pricing page if you do all three of these comp home page about pricing you will meet this goal here and so there's lots of things we can do here now you can enforce you can only have three so we cannot press another um, plus button so it has to be three particular events so let's just remove these and visits any particular page with a keyword in it so this could be you know Zoho blog if I want to know whenever somebody comes to my website if they visit my blog then I want them to complete a goal such as red blog so if we do pages contain a specific 
specific keyword and its URL. And th for this instance, we would actually just use you know, blog. So if somebody comes to our website and they visit our blog, um, then this goal will be met. But if you look right here, number of times events should occur. So this is where it gets interesting. We can say, if you come to our my website and you come here three times, then the goal is achieved. So this could be called red blog red blog three times because they you know if they were on our Zoho blog page they could read page one read page two and read page three and then since that's three pages with Zoho blogs in it um, that would count actually I take that back I wouldn't count and we'd have to actually add page one page two and page three in here but the idea here is um, you're gonna visit a particular page and then you know how many times it could be your home page you know if they come to my website and they visit the home page three times then you know they've completed this goal and so we also have here add goal duration and so going back to the example of my webinar pop-up you know right now if you go to my website you will be hit with a pop-up for this webinar and I can say start on date which I could say was you know two weeks ago when I started advertising and end goal would be date and that would be today's date the date of the webinar so moving forward goal duration ends today so if somebody clicks on if somebody meets this whatever goal criteria we have together we have assembled here um, if you know this end goal is today or some other date then that it will stop actually um, counting those as achieved goals and filter users based on field information if available now this is where we also get into some great information so this is if your what if your marketing hub is linked to Zoho CRM um, then your CRM data gets pushed over here into marketing hub and there's other ways you can do you know if you have if you're using marketing hub and you don't have CRM you're just importing and exporting files well provided you have a field in Zoho marketing hub and you're inserting data there we can then filter these out so right now we have this this goal will be achieved if someone visits a particular page which is this page and we can say their let's say their title uh, or title contains right and so if we have a thousand people in our CRM they all visit this page but we only have 27 director level people visit this page well, this goal is only going to be met 27 times because it's only applicable to known CRM data which is the people that have a title that contains director and again if we go back Another way that we could say, if we know if someone is a nonprofit, we come in here, we could do email, right? Email contains dot org. And so we have our criteria up here and we add some additional filtering information, which is they are dot org email address. Um, and you know, all of your um, you could do you know phone contains I'm in the 540 area code right um, state so if you want to say only the people that visit this that visit my blog post and they are in the state of Virginia then let this goal count right so you can come to my website go to this page but if in my CRM you're not um, your state is not Virginia then you will not meet this goal 
so let's scroll on down some more here and so you can see this is basically how you leverage data from your CRM now I actually have um, persona fields if you take the time to segment your CRM out into personas um, this is a great one so you could say persona is micro business owner or persona is small business owner and those of you that are in business development know that you have an ICP an ideal client profile and you build those ideal client profiles by segmenting you can you can reach them in a highly personable way by segmenting them out and one of the ways you can segment them out is by the personas and so that's what I've done here and so can you and so if we look back up here we have our goal name we have a criteria that has to be met pages you know event past events that they've occurred we come down here to define gold action so this is where the, the magic hack happens this is where the uh, Zoho market uh, automation um, is revealed so once we click this perform actions so this is saying when somebody when somebody achieves this goal that we created for them um, when somebody achieves these goals then perform this action and if we look at this new page that I um, this new slide that I brought up here uh, I showed you an example of the implementation about pricing creating a goal so if that was up here right if we said if you come to my you know here visit a particular page about visits another page with the pricing in it pricing right and we'll take out this persona we'll say what is this so when somebody comes to our website and they do these three things what do we actually want to do and so here we have a slew of um, options one of the great ones here is send email right if somebody comes to our our website especially if we're cold emailing out and somebody clicks on these three things that's a sales signal because hey they're interested so let's go ahead and send them an email when send it well you don't maybe you don't want to send it immediately maybe you want to wait an hour to send that to them and so we come here and do configure content configure content and so You can say hi. You can use a merge field called leads first name. And here, if you do not know what the leads first name is, it's just going to use customer. Uh, so we can say hi, first name. And you can have this come from always like to put in their to address next and then this is basically going to open up our you know, email template builder um, if we come here you can see I can select this template and so when somebody comes to our website they go to the main page the about page and the pricing page they're gonna get this email here and you can see basically um, it's just the you know an email talking about implementation services as well as a way for them to schedule a consultation uh, with us and so you can see that's a great example of marketing automation I'm going to choose close go ahead and I'm actually going to get out of this because I don't want to send an email um, so I'm going to do cancel here edit okay so you can see under marketing goals achieved we're gonna get rid of send email so what else can you do you can add leads to a list you know if you come over here to leads and you see manage lists you can see 
all the lists that we have created you can add one so this is webinar so it looks like 22 people have signed up for this particular webinar and what I did was I made it so that when someone signs up for our webinar they get put into this list and then an email goes out you guys have probably all got that email um, but that's how that works and so that's we're not going to send an email that's that's add to list we can push data to Zoho CRM we can update a field add score assign tags remove tags update product audience field levels add audience to product and so let's just quickly go over these um, push data to Zoho CRM so you can actually map a drop-down field in CRM you call it marketing hub goals you set it up and you have goal A goal B goal C and then here in marketing hub you name these goals goal A goal B and goal C and if you have push data to Zoho CRM this will actually allow you to if this goal here was called goal A then you could um, push this goal A as being the fact that it's achieved you push it to CRM and then in CRM it would say goal A achieved and so if you enable history tracking in your CRM on that particular field um, you will know when they complete goal A goal B and goal C and so uh, push data to CRM that's what that is you know good for update field this has numerous um, use cases one of the ones that I like is I use a lot of dynamic uh, content via, um, dynamic content blocks in my emails and so if for example these three were Zoho desk you know they went to our Zoho desk page they went to our Zoho blog page and they went to our Zoho um, desk pricing page I could actually update a field in marking hub here and call it interested in Zoho desk right and one of the reasons I would do that would be so that when I'm using my dynamic content when I'm creating emails and using dynamic content blocks I could say if the Zoho <coughs> excuse me if the lead or customer here in marketing hub has interested in Zoho desk in a particular field then show them this content block <clears throat> right and so uh, to better help you conceptualize this you could say if first name is Jeff then show them this content block within the email and so all I'm doing here is once people are completing these goals and you can get very creative um, but once people are, are using these goals um, you're then updating the field um, you know add score so this is something you can do in CRM, something you can do with Sales IQ, and something that you can do with um, um, and so Marketing Hub. Now, if you look at Ad Score, if you were to look at the default scoring that Zoho Marketing Hub provides you, it's I think it's like uh, five points if somebody opens an email, and ten points if somebody clicks on a link in an email. Well, that's five and ten points, and those are great. <clears throat> but if we want to um, if somebody comes to our website and they click on these three things that shows a heck of a lot more interest than opening an email or clicking an email and so if somebody completes this goal here we don't we're not even thinking about five or ten for the for the score we're talking probably about 25 or 50 because this is a great sales signal and a great action um, that people that have come to our website and looked at these three pages they should be given you know definitely a higher score because they're definitely interacting with us uh, assign tags um, any great marketing of any great marketing platform will allow you to assign tags <clears throat> and you can uh, there's a lot of great use cases for those assign tags remove tags 
update product audience field levels. And so if you remember back to our example in our Zoho Marketing Hub Web Assistance pages, there was, um, we, we said that if somebody visits these three pages, then go ahead and add them to the Zoho Marketing, um, the Zoho Desk product, right? And then you also notice that there was different levels there. And so there was the, I actually used the HubSpot buyer stages, which are awareness, consideration, and decision. And so we can say that if somebody comes to our website and completes this goal, they are no longer in the awareness stage. They are in the consideration stage, which means, you know, they already know what problem that they have and they're looking for a solution. And so by moving people, you know, using goals to move people through your product audience fields levels, I mean field levels or levels, um, that's a great use case. Add audience to product. And again, we could say if somebody comes to our, our homepage and then they come to our um, Zoho managed services, let me get rid of this one, then we could say add audience to product and my product that I'm selling is Zoho Managed Services. And so when somebody visits our homepage and they clicks on that, they're going to get um, added to our Zoho One Managed Services product. And you can see how we can scroll through these. Um, and the great thing is you can actually do multiple actions, right? And so we could say, let's come here, let's do this X we can say mm -hmm. so we could do add you know if they achieve this goal add tags uh, let's see so implementation services add another action what else do we want to do we want to add them to a list select a list we also want to add uh, add a score we're going to add this 20 points and we want to add another action which is update field Select the field. And if there's any fields in here that you want to update, you know, you could perhaps newsletter, right? So if you're simply using a checkbox for your newsletters, if you're not, you can, you can, if you have an email list, you can add people to a list. But if you have a checkbox, like such as this cruises and it will say true so that when somebody comes here completes that goal it'll do these three things and it'll also go to our cruises checkbox and put a true there and so when you're looking at goals these are you know very customizable and a great feature so you're going to create a goal define the goal conditions here goal criteria duration this is where you again you leverage your CRM data or your marketing hub data if it's not synced to CRM um, and then you come up here with these defined goal actions and that is uh, goals and again one thing I wanted to come back to sorry is if we just do create goals um, you can say performs a particular event what event well, it's our click on that button event on any page. So if they click that button and say um, they visit a particular page, again, Zoho blog, um, Zoho blog and do this or better one let's see this this was a good one visits a particular page 
Um, so blog, right? And then we say they come to our blog and they visit page two of our blog, which means they've read ten or more, or you know, skimmed past ten or more, and they visit, right? Say page three of our blogs. When someone does this, then what we want to do is we want to say update audience field levels. And so this means they're very pretty interested in our blog posts. Um, and so we could do update that. You could say Zoho One implementation and support. And we're going to say product lead level. And we are actually going to move these people to consideration, right? Um, and so when we originally assigned them into the awareness, that means they just showed us kind of a small action that shows us that they're you know, interested. But if they do, you know, if they do three times, they're interested in reading our blog. And um, sorry, I guess I could have came up with a better scenario um, to show this, but I'm just showing you how all of this kind of relates to um, each other. And so let's go back to Zoho goals here. So let's come on over here to miss goals. And these are basically, remember how we just previously created goals? Well, what about the people that didn't meet our goals? What about the people, if we had a goal that said, if they click on this button triggering this event and they visit this page, then they've reached the goal, right? But what if somebody only, say, doesn't look at a particular page, but they do click that event? Well, that's that would be a missed goal because they didn't meet our goal criteria. And so, for example, we have one here. If you remember, um, when you click on the page that takes you to my webinar, remember how I created a, a page for this particular webinar where people could register? Um, so we have I created a goal here called miss goals so I say do not re did not register right and so this actually sorry let's, we can do a different one we can say create miss goal and we can say give it a name doesn't matter if they're new or returning this activities perform so they could have visited right a particular page which was my webinar page and if I created a button remember if you think back to this marketing webinar assistant page there was a button on there called sign me up it was actually multiple buttons called sign me up so we can say if somebody comes visits this page does not perform perform a particular event which was we could say the sign me up event the sign me up button then I want to go ahead and send them an email right and let's wait maybe let's wait one day so after they come to my um, website let's see return, start. Yeah, after they come to my website and if they did not click that button to sign me up one day later then go ahead and send them this email and it could be hey there's still time to um, to sign up for our webinar right and so uh, again if we come back up here you want to give it a miss goal name Define your goal actions is for new users, returning users, or both. And you say, what activities did they perform? Did they visit a particular page, perform a particular event? And then which activities did they miss? And you have the same three instances here. So if you were, let's go over here and miss goals. Let's go to some of these scenarios, which we will just cover the visited webinar page. So if you are a nonprofit using Zoho and someone came to your nonprofit website, they clicked on the give a donation, right? If they say come here, perform a particular event, and if we had an event called Donate Now, um, called Donate Now, and we say the activity missed is does not visit a particular web page and 
this is where we put our thank you page right if you think about it when somebody donates money they expect to see a thank you page so if somebody comes to our website clicks on the donate now button but never makes it to this thank you web page then they didn't actually donate did they and so this would be another reason you could send them an email or you could uh, do something uh, with that knowledge um, and so here's another example if somebody um, visited our home page visited our blog page and did not sign up for the newsletter go ahead and send them you know an email or go ahead and work them through you know using these to find actions using these um, you know do something with that information and I'm about to show you how this links to journey builder e journey email building which is you know pretty exciting and so this is missed goals you know what did they what did they actually do and again you, know, you can come here and say they did these three things but they forgot to do this one thing and then we do what we give that an action to take and so if you look here filter based on information again this is back to the known data so if if John Doe's in our CRM we send him an email and he clicks it and sets a cookie we'll know that John Doe has come to our website and we'll know things about him and so um, we could use we could use this to filter it out again you know you could say first name equals John Doe or first name is you know John doesn't get much more basic than that although not really uh, practical um, so miss goals give it a name define goal conditions here and if you want to use CRM data or so marketing of data you can uh, if you look here one example that I have is you know if they visit our Zoho desk product page they, they read a blog post with Zoho desk in it but say I have on my website you know five um, case studies if they did not read the one that's associated with you know how Zoho d the case study associated with how an organization that I did work for um, how they benefited from Zoho desk if they did not read that then go ahead and email them that right or go ahead and perform one of these 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 actions here and one thing that I want to you know make sure you're aware of is you know you set the criteria and then you do an action and this is important to realize because once we uh, go over to entering into email journeys where they, they the fun stuff starts you will probably have to um, enter them into the journey using these missed goals okay, so purchase abandonment if we come back here to um, our website with there's something here purchase abandonment and so this is generally used for um, e-commerce now if you're using Zoho campaigns it actually does have a native integration with Shopify um, not sure why they didn't uh, do that here in marketing hub but they have not and if you come in here and do setup you can either do a site abandonment or cart abandonment if you choose cart abandonment you will need to have a developer work with you to integrate with your uh, site um, to set up the API the calls you know uh, whenever you know, if you're using Magento or if you're using Shopify or if you're using WooCommerce you know these you have to build out a different type of integration so you would do that here and so for us we're just going to choose this site abandonment one and this is basically saying you, you know a site abandonment so you say give it a name what was the page that they came to what was the thank you page and then do something after 30 minutes or after you know 40 minutes um, now while this was built for um, e-commerce websites you can um, use this kind of like a missed goal where you say you know if you came to this page and this page um, the 40 minutes later you know mark it as 40 minutes later then then do this performed action um, so uh, just for sake of time we won't go too much into this one um, but this is where you could say 
you know, your purchase page, which could be your long URL that includes your, yeah, it could be your cart URL. And then the thank you page could be what is the page um, of your, the, of the order status, right? When somebody actually completes an order, what is that page? Um, so that's how site abandonment works here. So let's come over here to uh, smart pop-ups, right? And smart pop-ups. So this is where we can do some really cool things. And basically, so let's go in here, do smart pop-ups. And this is, you can either do a sign up pop up, which is basically kind of like a newsletter. Give us your first, last, and email address, and we'll sign you up. You know, kind of like a form. And then the other one is an engagement pop up, which could be the one that you guys get hit with when you visit my website and you notice that the pop up on the Zoho webinar that's happening today uh, actually popped up. And so that's what we did. We created an engagement pop up. And so let's go in here and create new. Now. We have our name here. We can say give it a name. And you'll notice two things here. Select and customize pop-up and then pages. So we do design engagement pop-up. Now you can see here regular and then vertical. These are just the templates and the horizontal ones that um, and so oh, let's you know, pre-built for you and so let's go ahead and choose this one use this template and so if we come over here click the setup this is you know important trigger on you know, trigger on entry do you want to make it so that when they come to when they come to your page should they immediately be hit with this pop-up or if you want to do scroll you can say if they scroll all the way to the bottom of the page then show them this pop-up or if they should you know if they scroll halfway down the page you know maybe below the fold then show them this hop up this pop-up on rejection to show again in one hour so if somebody comes to your website you don't want them to dismiss this pop-up and then every page that they go to everything that they do they get hit with the same pop-up right and so that this that's what this one does here is it sets um, the time limit for how, for how long that it will wait to show you this pop-up again and so by default this is set to one hour and so if somebody comes to our website they click this uh, and they wait one hour and one minute then it's going to show this to them again so you can change this to day or hours but uh, generally if somebody comes to your website they're spending less than an hour there um, and then when they come back you know a day or two later maybe you want to show this to them again so that's kind of what this is here for uh, so scroll so you can see as I select these they turn blue so entry scroll and exit and so exit is when somebody um, is scrolling really fast towards the top of the browser that's an exit sign and so this will go ahead and get triggered um, so let's just go back here to design and so pop-up body this is this little picture here this is um, the width and height uh, now you may want to um, uh, play around if you do change any of these settings including you know the colors the uh, border anything here you you do want to trigger the pop-up in a test environment so that um, you can see if if it's going to display correctly because I've had it you know I've changed just one little basic thing in here and it's just all out of whack like this this man on this uh, this person on this uh, paper airplane is way over here right um, so if you do change any of this make sure you test it um, book now so this is where when somebody comes when somebody sees this pop up and they click this where do you want it to go to and so you just could do Or if I'm making my webinar one, I could redirect them to my webinar page. Um, and again, book text, book now, so you can book now, please. And you can see how that changes here. Uh, but again, when you start playing with this, make sure you test it. We'll do save and proceed. 
And so now we've built our um, pop-up and you can edit this after you've built it um, but the pages you cannot right so let's come down here to select pages so we have our pop-up built now this is saying okay well where do you want to show your pop-up at you want to show it on all pages and if you do you just simply come down here and you click save right it's going to show that on every page in your website if you have specific pages that you want this pop-up to show on it could be a marketing landing page it could be your blog page it could be a specific product or service page um, for my in my instance um, if I have someone that comes to my blog page right I created a pop-up that said as soon as they as soon as they start to exit hit them with a pop-up a full screen pop up that says, you know, stay in the loop and subscribe to our, you know, our our blog notifications emails. And so, you know, that gives people that have read through my blogs or read a blog an opportunity to sign up for our blog notification um, emails. And so we have all pages specific pages, pages matching these specific criteria. All right. And so once you start with, you can add another one here. And make sure you remember you can say or so you can say page is this or this or you can say page is this and they visit this page right and so you can get creative with that uh, show to anonymous known and both and so if we choose both here we can see add filter based criteria for known visitor right so if we do not know who they are then it's only it then it's going to show them this pop-up but you know we can't do anything else but if it's a known visitor I mean we set the cookie and we we know that in our instance John Doe if John Doe visits our website we'll know who he is and we can start doing things right so if we choose both and I choose add field based criteria on known user or known visitor right so this is where I like to get creative so if we have a, um, a Zoho desk implementation right if I have a page for Zoho desk um, and I want to show say I'm doing some cold say I have a list of cold cold calling people or a, a list of people to to reach out uh, on a cold cold call basis I can say if their industry right if I send them an email industry is insurance is insurance and I can say this and I can say page URL contains desk so when somebody comes to a URL that contains desk their industry is insurance and the persona that I've attached to them is um, micro business owner then show them this pop-up we created so in this instance we'd have to go back and we'd edit that pop-up and we'd make it something that speaks to the in insurance industry of how they can use Zoho desk and more more you know we can also add in this micro business owner which is less than 10 people within your business so if a micro business owner that's in the insurance industry comes to a page with Zoho desk with desk in the in the URL it's gonna hit them with this pop-up now think about that if you look at all of the from a business development stance if you were to import say 10,000 users I mean 10,000 leads right there's probably gonna be maybe if you take your top three industries or your top three um, you know, any way you want to segment out the list but you know if you if you were to get 10,000 leads from say LinkedIn or zoom info uh, you you can never create enough pop-ups here that will show to everyone it will take you forever and so if you create the you know you have your ICP your um, ideal customer profile if you say oh well generally it's people that are in the insurance industry um, or people 
people in it, you pick your top three. So if they're in the insurance industry, if they are in the, uh, say, carpentry in industry, and if they're in the selling cars industry, if those are your three top performing, you know, the, the profiles that convert the most for you, then it's worth your time to create a specific um, pop-up that speaks to them, right? And so you can, for industry, you can say industry is insurance. You can say and title, right? Job title is, uh, job title contains manager, changes this one to or, or job title contains director, or job title contains VP. Um, let me go over. So you can see here, so if somebody comes to our page that has desk in it and they are in the insurance industry and their job title is manager, director, or VP, go ahead and hit them with this pop-up, right? And so let's go through some examples here. Um, one thing that I, you know, while well, this is a great example, industry, what their uh, pages, what their titles are. Another thing you could say is if they're in the insurance industry and like say you named the three biggest cities around you. And so when you, when you have leads in your system or customers in your system, you're probably going to know, especially if you sold to them before, there's the city that they're in, right? And so with me selling Zoho implementation services, you know, I could go I could actually travel to uh, the three cities that are nearest by me. So, you know, when I'm working with someone in California, you know, obviously we'd have to do some virtual meetings. But if I could hit them with a pop-up saying, hey, I can come by your location, that's another way we could use pop-up. So I could say industry is insurance. And I could say and Maryland City is Fredericksburg. Or and so with this particular one, right, we're saying that is on desk. The people so then in this particular pop up, if people come to the page URL containing desk and they are in the insurance industry and they are in Fredericksburg or Spotsylvania, show them this pop up, right? And so there's a lot of things that we can we can do here. Um, there's a, another one here. I like to go back to my nonprofit example because I've worked for nonprofits for a little over 25 years. So we could say lead email contains dot org, right? Or you could say, you know, plus you could say or you know, website address contains dot org. And so this would say if somebody, if a known visitor comes to a a page URL that contains desk in it and their email address contains .org and on their profile their website address also contains .org then we're going to show them a pop-up and in this instance again going back to the services and goods that I offer could be you know hey we offer you know 50% discounts to nonprofits or um, you know hey you know did you know that we can create you know fundraising landing pages and 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 do all of this tracking with them. Uh, just anything that's geared towards nonprofits, and that's how we use this ad filter based criteria, right? Um, and so we also have down here set activity based criteria to show on pop up, right? And so let's go ahead and take this away to our known data stuff so we can avoid the confusion there. We say show the pop up based on goals, missed goals, source referral UTM sources and campaigns city and country so again one thing that's beneficial here is you can create two pop-ups one that's for if the device is a computer show them this big full screen pop-up that's you know wider than 700 pixels right and you would create a pop-up for that. Then you would create another pop-up saying if the device is mobile, then make sure you use a pop-up template that is smaller or one that um, doesn't require as much 
uh, input, field input, or maybe uh, maybe you have an entirely different CTA if it's a mobile action. So these can be um, beneficial here. And so with this pop-up, we could say goals, right? Remember we created a goal for um, if somebody comes to our website and they go to the home page, the about page and the pricing page, that's a sales signal for our implementation services. So we could say if someone achieved our Zoho implementation page services right, then hit them with this pop-up. So in a previous example, when they achieved this goal, we did send them an email. But here under pop-ups, we can say if you achieve this goal, then boom, you get hit with this pop-up, right? Or if you miss this goal, right? If you did not, if you miss goals achieved, did not register, then show them this pop-up, right? Or when you have a single page on your website, perhaps a landing page, right? So in my instance, um, I could say show them a pop-up if the UTM campaign is So remember how when we were working with pages, I went into the page and I created some tracking links. Well, one of the uh, options there was we could name the campaign. And so I can make it so that if somebody clicks on a particular link, they're going to get brought to this page. And then in the URL parameters, it's going to say Web Assistant Webinar. Remember one of the, um, remember how I created five different lead sources for that particular page and so this is just saying if the campaign is web assistant webinar then show them this pop-up right you could say you know all of these are available to you we could say if um, if referral is So if Zoho.com is their refer, if somebody clicks on a link from Zoho.com and they refer, Zoho refers them to me, I can show them this pop-up. So you may want to say if you have, um, you know, say you have marketing partners, um, you want to say if, if these three partners, right, or let's say these two. These two. So if this refer is from these two, then show them this pop up, right? And so these are kind of Zoho uh, pop ups. But say I work with, say, web hosting services and I have an ad on their services on their page. If someone clicks my ad on their page, and so say if we have a a partner called um, for Saints website now.com if someone if someone goes to website now.com they click on a referral link here then boom they're gonna get hit with this pop-up so uh, again we're gonna show you that um, we're gonna show on these pages this is the criteria if you want to have act, um field-based criteria which is information pulling from your CRM you can do that here uh, activity based criteria here and so this is um, four pages so again if we come back into pages let's just do something simple here which is just specific pages and we could say if you're on the contact us page or the you know home page um, and you can go and click save I think that's everything here in my example Um, there's a, a use case example that I've come up with for Shopify is if you say page matches a criteria criteria for collections so in Shopify you create collections and then you have products so if you say 
the collection is gold. If, we're a, if we are a coin reseller, and we say or uh, page URL contains, right? This, is, this would be our rare coins collection, and it would be a product gold or product silver. So if somebody comes to our website on Shopify, and it's it includes these these here, then go ahead and hit them with this uh, pop up. Um, so let me click cancel there. And so that is all I have here for smart pop ups. And you can see that you can get really um, you can create multiple um, pop ups. Obviously, schedule. You know, if I only want this pop up to come up for the month of April, um, I can schedule that here. Um, but if you click schedule after you select pages, I'll do all pages. If I click schedule, it's going to say, do you want to always show it or at a specific time? And then you know you may want to say, oh, only show it on you know Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, right? And so you get some scheduling features there. Uh, so the next thing that I want to move on to here is email journeys based on web assistance right so while we do know that we have these web assistants that we can use right pages events goals missed goals smart pop-ups purchase abandonment and when these are met we can then take one of those nine actions right well we can also dump them into journeys right so if we come here to journeys click on all journeys We'll click create new and I'll just go ahead and click a blank one and we'll call it uh, demo five. And if you're used to using uh, Zoho campaigns um, and now this is the first time you see Zoho marketing up, you'll see some new triggers over here. And our triggers basically you know this for this list entry once when we add someone to a list then what send them this email right and so if in our goal actions if we added someone to a list a particular list we could then send them on this um, this journey so maybe we want to come here and choose um, you know someone goes to our Zoho desk product we could send them these three emails right uh, send them emails so on list entry say send this one you know after a day send this one after uh, three days and send this one after five days and this could even be a news this is great for newsletters you know hey someone comes in they sign up for your newsletter and then you hit them with these three emails these just could be pr um, information about your products and services and how you're different um, it could play to the awareness stage of the buyer um, so let me go ahead and delete this on list entry delete and so here's what I wanted to show you miss goals remember miss goals so if we were to drag this miss goals here then you know we had we had one goal is that if someone comes to our nonprofit they click on the donate now page but they're never presented with the thank you paging page meaning that they did not um, you know actually go through the donation then we could send them you know these these then we immediately send them an email right delete delete maybe send them an email saying it's not too late to um, to donate um, so this is for miss goals and so if we delete miss goals click delete and we choose goals achieved right so we could say if someone you know for goals achieved if someone came to our nonprofit they clicked on donate uh, donate now and they were presented with the thank you page which means that they actually went through the donation process uh, then what do we want to do we're going to uh, take this one out here we are going to send them a text message right configure
I'm gonna send them this text this text message here. Save and close. Or what are some of the other new ones we have here? You know assign tags. So let's see. Let's delete this one, delete here. Delete. Okay, so we know that we could make it so that if someone if someone created an action, we could add them to a list. Let's do all right, push to push data to CRM. Okay, so if we wanted to say if someone completes this goal, right? You come here and choose select goal and then you select um, the actual goal of your but we could say the implementation services, right? This is the goal that we created that said if you visit our homepage, our about page, and our pricing page, you've completed this goal, right? And so we're going to say done. And then in the process, we are going to say CRM actions. And we are going to say create a task, drag that here, connect it here, and we are going to say map fields. Our leads. So good. Create a task. So I'm going to say And so now when somebody comes in and they achieve this, it's going to send our sales staff a, it's going to set a task in CRM for them to do something. Or we could also you know, create a deal or update a deal. And so again, if you think back to say delete. And so we could say if we created goals um, that included, or let me see if we, Another example was if we could say if someone from the insurance industry visited our Zoho desk page, then do this. Right? We could say, you know, send them an email, right? And so you could say if the goal achieved is Zoho One Implementation Insurance Agency, send them this email. But if they are a carpenter or a, you know, a, a house builder, you're not going to want to say the same things to a house builder that you will, you will to someone in the insurance industry. So you create one goal for the insurance industry. You know, if people are in the insurance industry, they get this goal achieved. But if they're in the house building industry, they get this other goal achieved and they get this other email, right? And so um, you can do all kinds of things here, add scores. I, I don't want to get too far down the uh, rabbit hole of email journeys, but what I did want to point out was that once um, you are in um, so Marketing Hub and you are using these um, web assistant goals, you can then under the goal actions, you can push them to, you know, journeys. And so there's, you know, a lot, a lot of things we could do here. In the past, you've probably said, okay, let me just push the, you know, maybe you create a journey with two emails in here. Um, and, you know, they would get this email day one, this one day three. Uh, but I've just showed you a way till we say, okay, well, let's just wait until they identify what exactly they're trying to do. And if we think, if we go to our website and we think like a customer, we can then draw together all these different points to say, if somebody's interested in this product or service, this is most likely where they would go, what they would click, things of that nature. So when you're using web assistance 
pin marking hub, you do have for triggers, you do have miss goal, goal achievement, tags. And so this definitely opens up a new way of how you can introduce some automation. You know, maybe you have a six week nurturing. You know, once somebody completes something, you can you you send them on a not everyone is ready to buy your product as soon as they complete a goal so maybe you want to send them four emails over the course of a month and then after a month you've made them aware of your product through those four emails now they're ready for your sales team and so you know you have to also strategize how you can leverage um, this email marketing um, this journey builder and you know if you come in and do all journeys create you know, there's a bunch of pre-built templates here. And so, you know, you can, if you have these, you know, 10-day welcome series, you could you know, very well easily use this journey as the template and make it so that when someone you know, completes a goal on your w website, that they are tossed into this 10-day welcome series. Um, you know, product trials. If someone comes to your website they click on a product trial and then they submit it. That information goes in the CRM and you can make it so that from CRM, it gets a field checked or some kind of data update that then puts them here into this product trial nurture. Um, so using web assistant goals is a great way for you to um, put people into journeys. Um, thank you for um, viewing this uh, marketing hub web assistant uh, webinar um, please do email me if you have any questions or concerns or comments and uh, we will be doing another webinar in the near future probably within the next few weeks um, that's probably going to be on uh, lead scoring how you score them in CRM how you score them with sales IQ and how you score them here in marketing hub Anyway, thanks again for participating in this uh, webinar, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this and you learned something. Thanks, and have a great day.